Let's have a go. I'm sorry for the delay. Guys, so uh, today's talk is going to be very light. Uh, just very quick and easy since we have lost some time. Um, okay, so what is hypnosis? So hypnosis is a trance-like mental state. Uh, often thought as a state of where people is sleeping, but instead it's a state of hyper-awareness, right? So people are really focused. You are not concerned about your surroundings. You just focus on the task. So um, trance-like state, again, it's an altered state of consciousness where a person is neither fully awake or fully in sleep. So uh, you, we, we enter exit trance-like state naturally. So imagine the time you were driving down the highway, um, you are totally relaxed and focused, and you can't really recall which route you take, right? Or the time you're playing dreaming, you're totally absorbed in your own experience. Or while watching a football match, praying, listening to music. For our further colleagues who are surgeons, they often experience a state of flow while doing procedure, right? So things just happen and they are not concerned about it. So that is also a trans-like state. So what happened to the brainwave, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Um, during conscious time, our brainwave is majorly beta. But when we are in light trance, our brainwave changed to alpha and uh, in a deeper trance to theta wave. Alright, so the history of hypnosis can be traced back to all cultures, uh, to all civilizations, where it's mainly used to uh, heal someone, right? So some uh, one culture that is worthy of mention is the Egyptian sleep temples, where 4,000 years ago, ancient Egyptians used to heal people in sleep or dream temples. So the religious, the, the, the priests would put uh, those sick people in trance through rituals, and then healing is taken this they thought is by chasing out the evil spirit and healing by God is suggested. So the father of hypnosis also known as uh, Frederick Anton Mesmer. This is where the word mesmerize came from. He's an Austrian physician and he suggests um, this concept of animal magnetism. So animal magnetism is actually what he says. There's an energy flow between animate and inanimate object. So uh, this, the healing that he suggests is uh, holding on to an uh, inanimate object or another person's hand to, uh, so that the energy can be equilibrium again. Alright, so the father of modern hypnosis, Milton Erickson, is an uh, American psychiatrist. He refined techniques such as uh, indirect suggestion, metaphor and confusion. By using this technique, he bypassed the conscious mind and uh, insert verbal and non-verbal, uh, insert suggestion directly into the unconscious mind. So, for example, the technique that you use, you already know something that you don't even know that you know. So it's very confusing, right? So it's designed to confuse the conscious mind. So in order to understand how hypnosis works, ladies and gentlemen, first we have to look at the topography of the mind. Uh, this is described by Sigmund Freud himself. He's also regarded as the father of modern psychology. So at the, it is like an iceberg, right, ladies and gentlemen. At the top part of the iceberg is our conscious mind. It is where we are aware right now, right? So we are talking, we are aware, uh, you are listening to me. It is where this part of the mind appeals to rational thinking and mathematics, reading and writing skills, right? So below that is a subconscious level where it stores our memory and knowledge. It is not readily available to us now, but if stimulated, it can be brought up to the conscious level. And even deeper down, it, is, it lies uh, the biggest part of our mind, which is the unconscious mind, which lies our fears, our desires, our motives, and so on and so forth. And this part of the mind, ladies and gentlemen, um, reasoning doesn't appeal to it, right? It understands by using symbols, metaphor, and images. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have seen someone that has been abused as a child, right? They often grow up, have this belief, and they are defective. So, so this belief is not readily changeable by reasoning or just by uh, discussion and so on and so forth. But what you have to do is you have to go down deep into the unconscious level to settle this conflict, right? Um, Freud himself uses psychoanalysis, developed this technique of psychoanalysis, where he would ask his patient to lie down on a couch and just talk whatever comes to mind. And he would sit behind and then he would analyze anything. 
it, it would analyze the the patient. That is how he get into the subconscious mind. But this technique is obsolete now. Uh, nevertheless, his model of the topography of the mind uh, help us to come up with new psychotherapy, utic modalities such psychodynamic psychotherapy, which uncovers the uh, deepest uh, unconscious conflict that a person is having. Uh, and although new treatment modalities like cognitive behavior therapy seems to only appeal to the conscious mind initially, but when we are working down at the later stage of the treatment, working down to the core belief is actually targeting change at the unconscious level as well. So what happened during hypnosis? First, the therapist put the patient into a, into a relaxed state and by re relaxing the patient, the therapist also filter out uh, negative dis other distractions by asking the patient to focus on whatever he said. And using that technique, he actually directly bypass the conscious mind to reach the subconscious mind and give suggestion directly into the subconscious mind. Right, so maybe those of you having pets at home, uh, go back and be hypnotized by your pets, right? Look into my eyes and you will give me two now. All right, I'm going a bit fast, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, because uh, we missed out on a bit of the time. So what are the indications of hypnotherapy? Um, smoking cessation uh, and phobias are one of the common indications. Things like chronic and acute pain, uh, used in a hypnotherapy is used as an adjunct to chronic and acute pain. And also for psychosomatic disorder like irritable bowel syndrome, there are a lot of evidence coming out as well. And also adjunct to anesthesia has been used. Okay, so myth number one, uh, it's, so there's supposed to be a writing here, the therapist can control your mind, myth number one. The truth is no one to, can control your mind unless you let them, right? So, um, hypnosis is likened like the therapist is a co-driver and you are the main driver, right? So I can just give you directions where you want to go. I can ask you to turn right and turn left, but you are the one who decide where you want to go, right? If I ask you to turn left, you want to go straight, uh, I can't stop you, right? So you, the therapist wouldn't control you and you wouldn't lose control of your mind. Okay, myth number two, I can't be hypnotized because my mind is too strong or disciplined. Truth is, hypnosis requires willing participants. I can recall when I first learned hypnosis back then, friends, colleagues, and families would come to me and say, can you try to hypnotize me here? So they are like asking, trying to try out, right? How strong is their mind? How resistant is their mind uh, to fight the hypnosis? So um, truth is what I told them is, is that I can't hypnotize you if you are resisting me, right? But like it or not, you are being hypnotized daily. Okay, think of the last time when you go to McDonald's. Up to here, you might think, oh, wait, 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 Dr. Wong. Last time I went to McDonald's is my own free will, right? I choose to go to McDonald's. I choose to buy the burger, right? But think back about that. Think probably a few days or few weeks back when you were driving, perhaps you were in a light trans state, and there is this advertisement of McDonald's, right? You pass by, you may, maybe you didn't notice much, but that advertisement, that suggestion actually went directly in your subconscious mind. And what happened when you were hungry a few days 